The history of CEMS started with the need for innovation in education. Expansion of the American economy after World War I meant industry required increasing supplies of raw materials, chemicals, and fuels. To meet this challenge and to address the growing popularity of chemistry, the discipline of chemical engineering was born in American universities. In 1919, the School of Chemistry at the University of Minnesota recruited Charles A. Mann to head up the newly created Division of Chemical Engineering. For 30 years, Professor Mann led a small group of faculty in the basement of Smith Hall with a focus on industrial chemistry. By the 1940s, the University of Minnesota had also developed a respected program in the School of Mines and Metallurgy. The longevity of Minnesota's mining industry has a lot to do with the University of Minnesota faculty who developed the taconite process in the 1940s. Uh, the School of Mines and Metallurgy educated generations of engineers. One of our most important graduates, metallurgy graduates, uh, was Morris Fine, who was instrumental in defining a new field, material science and engineering, which includes not only metals, but also ceramics and polymers. In the second half of the 20th century, the University of Minnesota's chemical engineering program also saw a transformation. It was 1950 when we moved from the basement of Smith Hall into the sunlight, and everybody loved the idea that we had windows to see through. Neil, of course, was heading the department at that time, and it was just getting started, so he was busy thinking about what he was going to do when he got the new space. Neil, obviously, was the head of the department when we came out here. He taught this advanced math for chemical engineers. It was at 8 a.m. on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Okay, and he was there. So you knew to be there at 8 a.m., especially on a Saturday. And at the end, he'd have like four boards filled with writing and everything like that. It was all right out of his head, without notes and everything else. Starting in the 50s, the chemical engineering department at Minnesota actually led a revolution in the entire field, restructuring it with a vision that Neil Emerson had that it should be based in science, that it should use mathematics as a tool, and it should address a broad range of problems, not simply those in the chemical industry. It was a, a way of learning, of teaching and learning, that it was to try to truly understand the principles and continue growing and, and learning new things, applying the old ones to move forward. Over the years, Amundsen recruited some of the brightest minds from around the world, including Rutherford Harris, Bob Carr, John Dollar, Arnie Fredrickson, Ken Keller, Skip Scriven, Ted Davis, Lanny Schmidt, and many others. Rutherford Harris was a polymath. He could speak about anything. He talked about column chromatography and Latin paleography. I think anybody who worked for Skip and Ted uh, will remember the, uh, the experiences of writing a manuscript. Uh, Ted, in particular, uh, liked ideas and, and laying out things in a clear way, and Skip was absolutely driven to uh, express things as clearly and as succinctly as you could. Ken Keller had a big influence on my career, and he taught biomedical engineering, which was a new concept to me, if not a new concept to the university at the time. So that idea about being able to design products to help people really captured my imagination. As Amundsen and his early hires were shaping the chemical engineering program in the 1950s and 60s, Dick Swaleen, Maury Nicholson, and their colleagues in metallurgy were shaping the future of material science. Over time, the fields of material science and chemical engineering began to cross over in several ways. In 1970, chemical engineering merged with material science at the University of Minnesota to create the incredibly broad, multidisciplinary program we have today. Even as the program continued to evolve and grow its reputation, CEMS always maintained a strong sense of community and collaboration. We had a small group then. We kind of bonded pretty well. It was really a great sense of camaraderie. We worked hard together, we kind of supported each other, and we partied together too, which is you know part of the experience. When I arrived here in 1990, I remember it being a very energetic atmosphere. I was surrounded by people who loved what they did, research, teaching. In fact, I had the pleasure of launching my research career here and uh, interacting with a number of faculty, including Skip Scriven, who taught me a lot about uh, how to think deeply about research. Along with a history of pioneering research in the department, CEMS alumni are also pioneers, from Bob Gore, inventor of Gore-Tex, to Art Fry, inventor of the Post-it Note, among many other success stories. So back in 1981-82, that time PC started, what they need is a low-cost bus storage. So they approached me and said, hey, Chen, 
Why don't you start a company? I said, well, I don't want to do it. We have to raise money. It's too headache. But the guy said, don't worry about it. I help you raise money. You just, just tell me you want to do it. I help you raise money. That's how I started. We did not discover carbon fibers, but we did figure out how to make it a low enough cost. The biggest application we have is the wind turbine blades uh, reinforcement for anything over 50 meter long blades. They're all carbon fibers now, and that was because of what we did. I think if you ask people at General Mills what they remember me for, and there are probably three things. One is that, that continuous cereal system. Uh, the other thing, honey nut cereals, people will say, hey, you know, Phil was on that fault with that whole thing, making that work. And the last thing was gluten-free cereals. I've done everything in my career since I graduated, starting out being an engineer, then working my way up. I've run sales programs, I've run marketing programs, and I've run two companies that I've sold. So I think it's, it's been an interesting career and I'm still having fun. The success of our alumni colleagues uh, has really been remarkable from leading Fortune 500 companies to uh, enormous scientific and technical breakthroughs. So the quality and quantity of a Minnesota program uh, I think is, uh, is very special and differentiates us from almost everybody else.